a while since we've done a, an update on this Mustang. I mean, um, I, I've adapted a couple of philosophies in, in, in video in this as I've restored it. One is do updates as long as you do things. Uh, or try to video what you're doing. Well, today they put the windshield in. So I, I videoed that, so you'll see, you'll see that, uh, depending on how um, it's edited in. But let's go over and look at, at the car and um, see if we can get a, 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 an estimate of what has been done to it. A lot's been done lately, it really has. Um, so anyway, here we go. I'll give you a side shot here. You can see everything's pretty much together. Wheels are on it. They might have been on it last time. Engines in it, transmission, drivetrain, of course. All the little doodads are under the hood. I have left the hood off because I'm not sure if I'm gonna have to go back into the uh, power booster. Um, I think it's okay. It, it all, all seems pretty firm when it's not running. And it's a, it's, it goes down more once the vacuum uh, uh, booster is uh, activated. But sometimes it goes too, sometimes they will go too far. Not this one, hasn't done it yet. But I want it to be right. I don't have, if I have to take this mass, excuse me, this booster out, I don't want to have to deal with a hood hinge. So it's all out right now. Uh, as you can see, they put the windshield in this morning. Um, and it's, um, Looks pretty good. Uh, side glasses are in. The back glass is is in, and and the chrome is just just laying up here. Um, this was this is interesting. I, I worry about things like this. You're dealing with a piece of glass that you don't want to have to replace, and so I put the gasket on it, run a rope around it, and uh, the other night my grandchildren were here, so I got my son, his grandchild, his children. Uh, I got my son to help me just set it on the back of the car, thinking, yeah, the next day or so I'll I'll put it in. It just it just happened. Uh, we slid it in, and I put an, a nine-year-old and eleven-year-old in the back seat on the rope, and it within two minutes it was in. It's amazing. The things you worry about aren't a problem, and the things you don't worry about turn around to be a problem. Anyway, the engine's in, power steering's working. I hooked that up last. Uh, there was a drip coming off the control valve, no, off the um, uh, uh, power steering ram. Uh, I tightened one of the uh, lines, so maybe that's going away. Uh, engine runs fine, um, holds good oil pressure, um, and charges. Uh, I'm running the electric choke off the uh, green red wire off the... Uh, Voltage regulator, I found that out, it's the hard way. Everything's grounded, everything works fine. All the lights work. I will tell you a story. Um, it's a new wiring harness. And there's the wires right there. It goes into a, a block down there that's covered in a rubber boot. But when I got the wires, there was a note. When I got the harness, there was a note. Because you, you had to install the little pins in the block at the correct, in the correct position. And there was a note saying that the green wire with black stripe, see the green wire with black stripe down there? That's the green wire with black stripe. You'll also look right down here. There's a green wire, you may not see the black stripe. There's a green wire black stripe on the high beams. Which means there's two green wires with black stripes. But the note on the wiring harness said, install, I believe it's something like, install the uh, green wire black stripe with the blue piece of tape on it in the number seven position. It may have been another position, but they told you where to install that one. As I was reading that, the, um, the piece of blue tape came off in my hand. So I did not know which, which green wire black stripe to put where? I guessed. I guessed wrong. Um, and after I got the headlights installed, see, for our headlights, the two center high beams on the outside are a combination high low. I um, wanted to see the high beams. 
And when I turn the high beam switch on, which is a foot switch in this era car, the windshield washer turned on. Likely, likewise, when I pressed the windshield washer, the high beams came on. Now, as comical as that might sound, it was exasperating at the time until I remembered the green wire, black stripe, and blue piece of tape. So I had to take it apart. Very easy, took it apart at the firewall, pulled the bulkhead uh, connector apart, swapped the wires around, everything was everything worked great. So anyway, that's um, that's working great. Every, everything works fine. My little minor things, you know, uh, I had the uh, fuel temperature gauge grounded to the chass chassis board or the uh, back end board in the uh, instrument panel. So neither one of those worked until I took it apart and correctly installed that gauge, that gauge um, pod. Um, I find out that you, your sending units need to be forward. Um, the temperature sending unit, I, you know, I, I wanted to get a, um, I wanted to go ahead and start it. So I went and bought a Napa one. Napa's a good quality, I thought, uh, except after about maybe two or three minutes running, it was seven eighths of the way over towards hot. Um, and yet my temperature, my infrared temperature uh, sensor did not show up any, any heat issues. Um, so I waited and I ordered a, a Ford unit and put it in there and it works perfectly. Same way with the uh, oil sending unit. I've been through that situation before. You get in there and look at it. It's got the white wire with red stripe going to it. Um, I always put a Ford unit on that one because they're A, reliable and B, they're accurate. Um, everything else is um, pretty well, pretty well fine. Let me open the interior up and show you what, what I've done. Interior's in it. Um, I'm not through with that door panel over there installing it, uh, but it's pretty much all done. I use a late model um, three-point belts from Westco. Um, I uh, attach it up here on the on the roof side and then on the bottom and then you pull it across like this. So it works pretty well. It hangs clear. Um, door panels installed and no rattles. No rattles. Um, what else? Um, we'll get the hood on it. We will um, play with the gaps a little bit more and then we'll take it out, test drive it and um, take it to um, take it to the alignment shop and get the front end aligned. Uh, one thing in North Carolina, which is where I live, if you bring a car of a certain ilk into, into the state from another state, um, license and theft with DMV has to inspect the car. And of course, when I got the car, it was in in dire shape. And the inspector took one look at it and uh, he gave me a um, title only. Um, and he had to inspect it before it is um, licensable, which it will require a call to DMV and they'll uh, come by and look at it and issue it. There's a form you take along with the title to DMV and you get a get a license for it. Anyway, or you get an active title for it. Anyway, that's that's where we are so far.
a little larger, I understand. Yeah, I want them because of clips. This one ain't a little bit. Yeah. Those are, those are good ones. <laughs> That looks good over here. Let's see where we look. That looks good. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah, yeah. but it's a slide. That's what I do is it hardens. I'll come down here with a, a razor blade yeah. and trim, cut some, yeah. trim it out. Yeah, trim it out. You just let it dry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if you touch it, you won't get a lot of money. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, no. I know I haven't covered a lot of the processes here in, in doing a lot of actual hands on doing video, um, but it's obvious that I've done it. Uh, so I thought you might want to see the car probably 90% done. So, anyway, thanks again. I appreciate all the comments, and certainly if you have any more, just, just let me know.